This video has been kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Hi everyone! Today I'm finally here with another color challenge and this time it's the color red. Because I have a lot of ideas for the color red, I decided to split it up into two parts. So this part is going to be a light red that's perfect for the summer and then the next part is gonna be a darker red that's perfect for the fall. I wanted this video to come out way earlier in the month, but I was traveling for my birthday, and because of that, a lot of the video is through voiceover, but the pieces still came out really beautifully. I love, love, love how they came out. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. first design I worked on was the blanket. I knew I wanted to make a blanket with graphs, but I wasn't sure what type of graphs I wanted. So I wrote out different characteristics of red that also worked with the summer, and things like ladybugs, fruits, hearts, and roses all came to mind. So I played around with those elements and tried to implement them into the design. I also tried to figure out what should be in between those graphs, like maybe a granny square, a different type of graph, or maybe even a striped square. So I played around with all of those in Procreate, hoping in an idea would form. I also played around with the colors that I wanted to work with, which was red, white, and green. And at first, I was going to go for one type of graph, like the ladybugs or the apples, but eventually I added a bunch of fruits together for a fruit blanket. I was going to implement pink in the blanket also, but my boyfriend said he liked a pure red design instead, so I just went with that. For the blanket, I'm going to be using these huge skeins of yarn as well as these patterns right here. So for the patterns, I originally was thinking of doing granny squares, but I've never done the granny squares where you do like different shapes and appliques and stuff like that. So I was like, let me just stay within my realm with something that I know will work better, I think. So I'm just gonna do the graphs. And then for the yarn, these are really, really big skeins. Um, Joann's had like a big sale for these. I think it was like buy one, get one free or buy two, get one free. And I'm going to be using these for another project after I finish the red crochet. That's why I was like, yeah, I'll just get the huge ones. I know I showed the designs earlier, but I'm still a bit conflicted on whether or not I want it to be plain red like this have some pink involved and some beige in the red squares like this or just have it stay red and then have a pink border around it. I feel like I'm probably going to stick with the solid red squares and then figure out the border last once everything is done. Now I'm trying to figure out should I make the squares single crochet or should I make them granny squares. I might make them granny squares but I'm gonna play around with the yarn, make a couple of squares and see which one aligns best with the project. But before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and make all of the squares with the graphs just to go ahead and get them out the way. The apple graph I decided to use wasn't the right 25 by 25 size that the other two graphs were, so I just took off two of the bottom rows, one of the top rows, and one of the left columns. After it was the right size, I labeled each of the graphs to make the process easier for myself, then got started with making the fruit graphs. For each of the graphs, I first started with chaining 26 with the cream yarn and worked one full row of single crochet. I'm counting this first row as the first row of the graph, which is worked from right to left. For the second row, the graph is worked from left to right since I'm turning my work. Each of the graphs have different color changes, but the technique is exactly the same. For the apple graph in particular, the second row says that I need to do eight stitches with the cream yarn, then switch to red for three stitches, switch back to cream for three stitches, red for three stitches, and then cream again for eight stitches. So I went ahead and worked seven stitches with the cream. On the eighth cream stitch that I'm supposed to do, I worked half of a single crochet, dropped the cream yarn in the front, take my red yarn, make sure the tail is in the front with the cream yarn, and pull it through the stitch with my hook. Since this side of the project is going to be the wrong side, I have all the tails come out this way so that the front can be all neat and tidy. I work the next two stitches with the red, and on the third stitch, I work half a single crochet with the red, drop the red in the front like the other tails, pick up my already attached cream yarn, and then work the next two stitches with cream before switching back to the red. After doing two stitches with red and switching to the cream color, I worked my last eight stitches with the cream. At the end of the row, I chained one and turned my work. 
This third row is worked from right to left since it's the right side of the project. It says I need to do 7 stitches with cream, 5 stitches with red, 1 stitch with cream, 5 stitches with red again, and finish off the row with 7 stitches of cream. So I went ahead and worked the 6 stitches of cream before working a half single crochet in the 7th stitch, then switched to my red color. The tails now go into the back of the project, and this is where all of the earlier tails are. I worked 4 stitches with red before switching to the cream for the 5th stitch. In the next stitch it says I need to use the cream, and normally I would just pick up the cream and work with the stitch but if I did that the yarn would pull due to how many stitches are in between it so instead I cut a long tail and put that to the side then I take a new strand of the cream and use that to finish the one cream stitch with half a single crochet before switching back to the red for five stitches After the red, again, I can't use the same cream color without it pulling, so I attached a new strand and finished the row off with that. For the rest of the day, I worked on finishing that graph and all the other fruit graphs. It's the next day. I finished seven squares so far, and I realized that they're not big enough for a blanket that I personally want, so I decided to add more squares to the blanket. So originally, it was five squares like five by five, but now I made it five or seven by seven so that it'll be 50 by 50 inches. And so that means I have to make more squares. And um, for the most part, they're pretty fine to make. Um, it's just your normal tapestry. But for some reason, this one takes me the longest. This one is kind of annoying to make. So I'm gonna probably just get all of these out the way as fast as I can and then go ahead and do the apples and then the cherries. Um, I, I, if you can see, I haven't done the cherries yet because these took a long time yesterday. So I'm gonna probably just spend the rest of the day working on the tapestries and then I can do the red squares. I finally finished all of the squares. They took a total of three days to do and I always tend to underestimate how long it takes to make these because wow, they took longer than I thought. I thought I was going to finish it in one day, but no, it took three. But now that I have all of the squares, I also went ahead and tested out what kind of red square that I want to do for them. So I did one red square that is similar to the graph ones, which is just single crochet all the way. And then I made two granny squares, one that's a closed granny square with um, double crochets into each stitch. And then on this one where it's just the cluster stitches and out of all of them i think i like this one the best i'm gonna go ahead and make a whole bunch of these and then i can put everything together to make the solid granny squares all i did was first create a slip knot and chain four i then slip stitched into the first stitch and then chain two which counts as a double crochet in the space in the middle i worked two double crochets After, I chained one and then worked three double crochets in the same space. After, I chained two and created another set of three double crochets, which I repeated for a total of four sections. After I had my four sections, I slip stitched into the first chain of the row. After, I chained two, which counts as a double crochet. In the next stitch, I worked one double crochet. In the chain two space, I worked two double crochets, a chain two, and then two more double crochets. For the side and all the others, I worked into the tiny stitch that's close to the chain two gap we just worked into. Then after, I worked a double crochet into the next two stitches. Then in the chain two space, I worked two double crochets, a chain two, and two more double crochets. Then repeated this for the rest of the row. At the end, I slip stitched into the first chain to end the row. For the third row and all the rows after that, I worked them the same as the first by chaining two and then working down the row until I reached the chain two gap.
after working two double crochets, a chain two, and two more double crochets into the gap. I started the next side by working a double crochet into the tiny stitch next to the chain two gap. Then I continued working the side and row as normal for a total of five rows. I worked on making 24 of the solid granny squares, which was way faster than the fruit graphs. Once they were all done, I went ahead and placed them in the order according to my design, but with the wrong side facing up and slip stitched all of them together going row to row and then column to column. I slip stitch them together using a 4.5 millimeter hook because for some reason, my five millimeter hook just disappeared and I couldn't find it until after I was done with the blanket. After however many hours, like probably three to six, honestly, all of the squares were connected. For the border of the blanket, I used the five millimeter hook that I just found and attached my red yarn to the side of the blanket, chained one and worked single crochet around the entire blanket. Once I reached the end, I slip stitched into the first stitch, then chain two, which counts as a half double crochet. In the same space, I worked two half double crochets. Then in the next stitch, I worked a slip stitch. I repeated working three half double crochets into one stitch and then a slip stitch afterwards all around the blanket's border. Here is the blanket all complete. And you guys, I love this blanket so much. The graphs were really, really tedious to do, especially the strawberry ones. Like I had to do so many color changes and cutting the yarn and adding new yarn. And it was just, it was just a little bit annoying, but I'm glad I pulled through because they came out really nice. For the squares in between the graphs, I was really contemplating on whether it should be a single crochet, whether it should be an open granny square or a closed one or maybe another graph. So I was like testing them out and I ended up choosing this one because it just looked the best. And I just, this is a really pretty blanket. Like this is 10 out of 10 for me. I really, really love it. I also threw it in the washing machine so it's really soft and stretched out. If you wanna make this blanket, uh, I would recommend blocking the squares before putting them together. Like with these graphs, I made sure that each of them were 25 by 25, just so that they can actually like be similar. Because if I chose a graph that was 37 by 28 and then another 25 by 25, the blanket would be all over the place. But, and that's cute, that, that'll be really cute. I might, I might do that. Um, but that is not what I was going for for this blanket in particular. So I made sure all of the graphs were 25 by 25. Um, for the strawberry, I think it was like 27 by 28 or something like that. So I just had to cut off some rows or add some rows to it. But yeah, it came out really cute. This is what the back looks like with everything weaved in. And I do want to say that weaving in the graph tails were very tedious, probably even more tedious than making the graphs in the first place. So this is what the blanket looks like all complete and then this is what the back looks like i'm gonna measure the size of the blanket and put it right here so you know the width and the length and yeah it's very cozy i really really love this blanket it's perfect for like picnics or just cozying up in your room or on the couch and yeah i really like it The next project I worked on was a gingham top. I saw so many of these this summer and I knew this would be the perfect opportunity to try to make one with crochet. There were so many ways I could go with the top and my main idea was to make a bandeau top with a roughly bottom and then poofy sleeves. Pretty simple and easy idea, which is what I thought at first until actually attempting it for the first time, but we'll get there. For the gingham top, I messed up a lot, but thankfully I did figure out what I was trying to do after six to seven retries. So I'm just gonna show you the correct way on how to make it and then show you all of my mistakes just in case you want to make it too and save you some time. So for the correct pattern, I chained 128, which was divisible by eight, plus one extra chain. To find out what chain you need, just chain until the chain is able to wrap around your bust without stretching it or until it reaches your bust size and then make that number divisible by eight. As you work, it's going to shrink a bit, but then when you put it on, it'll fit perfectly. So that's why I say make it your exact bust size. Mine is 32 inches for reference. Also, I worked this project as a panel, but I do recommend that you work it in the round so that the color changes you do will look a lot cleaner. For the first row, I worked single crochet down with my red for three stitches.
On the fourth stitch, I worked half a single crochet, then took my light red and finished the stitch with it. Then with the light red, I worked single crochet down for three stitches, making sure that I work around the dark red so that as I work it, it comes with me. For the fourth stitch, I worked half a single crochet with the light red, then switched to the dark red and repeated these steps until the end of the row. Each color should have four stitches and on the fourth stitch, only do half a single crochet before switching to the other color. At the end of the row, I ended with the light red. I then chained one and turned my work, repeating everything I did for the next three rows. On the last color block of the fourth row, I worked it normally, but on the last stitch, I worked half a single crochet and then switched to my light red color to finish. Then I chained one with the light red and turned my work. I worked the first three stitches with the light red, worked half a single crochet in the fourth stitch, then attached my white color, which begins the next section of the gingham pattern. I worked that row and the next three rows as normal. I worked the pattern until it reached six inches in length. The width ended up being 28 inches, which was four inches below my bust size, but when I tried it on, it fit me perfectly. I took both ends of the top and slip stitched them together, making sure I did this on the wrong side of the project. I tried it on and used stitch markers to mark where I wanted the straps to be, then began to work on the bottom section of the top. To do this, I attached my red to the part of the top with the solid red chain with a chain one and worked an increase into every other stitch with single crochet. At the end of the row, I slip stitched into the first stitch, then attached my light red color and worked the gingham pattern around the row the exact same way I did in the top half. I think I watched almost every video Cinema Therapy has ever uploaded while working on this top. I genuinely love their content. Once I finished a total of six color sections, I ended the bottom half by slip stitching into the first stitch of the row, chained one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. For the straps, I turned the top inside out and then in one of the stitch marker stitches, I attached my red yarn and chained 40. I slip stitched into the other stitch marker stitch on the back side and then worked single crochets into the chain until I reached the end of the row. At the end of the row, I slip stitched into the same stitch as the chain then into the second stitch before turning my work and working back up the strap, repeating this for three rows. To end the strap, I just slip stitched into the next stitch, chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. After, I turned the top back to the right side, and it was done. Now, that seems easy, but unfortunately for me, it wasn't. When I first started the project, I originally chained 102 since that went around my bust perfectly and then worked the gingham pattern the same way I showed earlier. But the one thing I did differently was pull the yarn to reach the area where I needed to make a color change instead of bringing it along with me. And doing this made the top shrink so much that it wouldn't fit around my bust the way that I wanted it to. So I started over and changed the amount of chains I did. And I did this not once, not twice, not even three or four times, but five different times. For some reason, it wasn't getting into my head that the amount of chains wasn't the problem. It was the yarn being floated. But then I finally figured it out and realized that you have to weave the yarn in as you go. And I was like, duh. <laughs> and yeah, after that, I figured it out and made the top I showed earlier. Here is how the gingham top came out to look like. I am really happy with this. As you saw earlier, I retried this six to seven times i keep changing the number but 
it was a lot of times that I had to start over from the beginning and redo it and start over and over and over. I've used a gingham pattern once in the past and that was for a little tote bag that I made. And so trying to make one but for a shirt was a little bit more complicated for me. Like I was still using the color switching techniques that I used for my blanket. And then I realized like no matter how big I was making the chain for this, it was just gonna keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking with all the color changes. So I kept redoing it, changing the chain size, that wasn't working. And then I was like, what should I do? And then I, I looked it up and I was like, like how do people make gingham patterns? Like I need help. <laughs> And then I saw that people were actually just weaving the yarn in as you go so that once you get to the end of that certain block, it'll be right there instead of dragging it from here to here. And I was like, like, okay, yeah, that's obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me. Like, how was I gonna know? But at the same time, it was obvious, you know? Um, another thing that I do have an issue with is the fact that if you look closely, you can see there is a clear difference between the top section and the bottom section the bottom section looks a lot cleaner and that's because the top section i did one row chained one turn my work did that row chain one turn my work but for this one i was doing it in the round so i would suggest if you want to make this i would say to do the top in the round and then do the bottom in the round also so everything will be matching um, but besides all of that, I still really, really love the top. I was determined to make it. Like, it's crazy how, like, it's wild that my patience was pretty solid, like, throughout this. Like, I was never getting angry or frustrated. I was just like, okay, I made a mistake. I have to start over. Okay, I made another mistake. I have to start over. I made another mistake. I have to start over. But I was never like, Oh my gosh, you know what? I'm just gonna give this up. I can't take it anymore. Um, maybe because I was on vacation while I was making it and I had a lot of distractions. Uh, and this is my outfit that I really like. It has the little bubble hem skirt. It's a little wrinkly because it's been folded, but just ignore that. But yeah, the outfit is really cute. It's perfect for summertime. Um, I know summertime is ending, but I have to say goodbye in a cute way. And this is... Uh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So yeah, let's go on to project number three. For the last project in this video, I had planned to make some really cute strawberry slippers. I got the yarn, the hook, and I went ahead and got started. But as I was working with this yarn that I got, this is the yarn right here. It's like a 100% polyester, which should have been my first clue as to why this wasn't gonna work out. But literally as I chained, it, it was falling off like this. And I didn't even cut anything. I wasn't working really hard. It was just falling apart. But I was like, let me just try to hide that and keep going. So I got to like the third or fourth row. And then I was looking on the ground and like there was just so many fuzzies like everywhere. And even as I'm trying to show you this yarn, there's just fuzzies falling everywhere that I'm trying to pick up so that they just won't get everywhere and it really sucks because like there's so many factors that go into making like the perfect project you have to find the right yarn you have to find the right yarn with uh, the right material you have to have the right size and you have to have the right idea to see if whether or not you can actually bring it to life and for my slippers they were a great idea but the specific yarn that I purchased just wasn't it. So I'm going to have to go with my backup idea for this instead, which is a tote bag. So for my backup tote bag, I came up with a little design, which is this one here. So as you can see here, they're both solid color tote bags with little seeds on them. This one has the white seeds and this one has red seeds. And then obviously like, you know how a strawberry works, like the top of the bag is gonna be like the green. And then I also have some appliques, I'm saying it right this time, appliques of strawberries here and there. And like, also I wanna make like a little strawberry keychain and maybe like a bow with leaves on the end just to make it more creative and everything. And the way that I'm trying to do the bags, I'm gonna make both bags, but one is gonna be with a solid granny square, like three solid granny squares together. 
and then the other one is going to be three granny stitch granny squares and the reason i'm doing that is just because i'm really curious to see which one will look better and i know these don't take a lot of time to do so i'm just going to make all of the granny squares attach them add all of the appliques and the um, straps and then they'll be done this is the yarn that i'm going to be using it's 100 percent cotton and i got this from joann's i love the way the yarn feels and i just think this would be really cute for a little tote bag and i'm also using a five millimeter hook for the regular granny square i first started by creating a slip knot and chaining four i then slip stitched into the first chain and then chain two which counts as a double crochet in the space in the middle i worked two double crochets After I chained two, then worked three double crochets in the same space. After I chained two and created another set of three double crochets, which I repeated for a total of four sections. After I had my four sections, I slip stitched into the first chain of the row. Then I slip stitched into every stitch until I reached the chain 2 gap on the side. In that gap, I worked a chain of 2, which counts as a double crochet. Then I worked 2 more double crochets. A chain 2 and then three more double crochets all in the same space. In the next space and the other two spaces after that, I worked three double crochets, a chain two, and then three more double crochets. Once I finished working into every chain space, I slip stitched into the first stitch of the row and then slip stitched down until the next chain 2 gap. In that gap, I worked a chain 2 which counts as a double crochet, then 2 double crochets, a chain 2, then three more double crochets. In the space in the middle of the two corners, I only worked three double crochets. After I worked three double crochets, a chain two, and three more double crochets into the corner space. So the middle sections get only three double crochets and then the corner sections get three double crochets, a chain two, and three more double crochets. I repeated this for a total of seven rows. On the eighth row, I slip stitched until I reached the corner space, then attached my red color into the space and chain two. I then worked the same exact pattern that I was working all around for only one row. At the end of the row, I slip stitched into the first stitch, chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. I just finished doing the first granny square for the bag and i'm looking at the colors and it's making me think of an apple so much and so what i'm thinking about doing is making maybe the red one strawberry themed and then this one could be apple themed but i don't know exactly how i'm gonna go about this so i'm just gonna finish it the way that i was intending to so making two more of these and then putting them together and then maybe the strap can still be green maybe i'll add some brown in there or maybe i'll just make it into a strawberry you know because you've seen the thumbnail but i don't know yet so i'm just gonna go ahead and make these and the red ones 
and then figure it out as I go. I ate an apple for inspiration and worked on the other two squares while watching more cinema therapy. And after another like six videos, I've officially added them to my long list of favorite YouTube channels. After I had all three granny squares, I turned them to the wrong sides and then folded them into triangles and angled them in a way that I wanted to attach them. I then attached my yarn to the top of one of the sides of the bottom square and then the left square and then slip stitched down the sides of both. Once I got to the corner on the bottom, I just went ahead and continued slip stitching them together. It was a bit confusing after I was done slip stitching those two together on the shape, but I ended up figuring it out and folded them the right way so that I could slip stitch the other square onto it. Once I was done, I turned the bag right side out and added stitch markers to where I wanted the handle to be. I used my red yarn and attached it to one of the stitch marker stitches and chained 65. After I slip stitched into the other side stitch marker, then worked down the chain with half double crochet. At the end of the chain, I slip stitched into the next stitch, turned my work and worked back up the handle for a total of four rows. To end the strap, I slip stitched into the next two stitches Chained one, cut the yarn and pull to secure For the ruffles, I attached my green yarn in the middle of the bag and chained two Then in the same space, I worked three half double crochets In the next space, I worked a slip stitch. After that, I repeated working four half double crochets in one stitch and then a slip stitch in the other, working up the bag and around the strap as well until I reached back to the middle stitch. At the end, I slip stitched into the first stitch to end the row. I then repeated this on the other side of the bag. For a little extra detail, I made a cute little leaf ribbon by first chaining seven with my green yarn. In the second chain from the hook, I worked a single crochet. In the next, a half double crochet. Then in the next two, a double crochet into each. Then in the next, a half double crochet. And in the last stitch, I worked a single crochet. I slightly turned the project and worked a single crochet into the bottom of the last stitch I just did. Then worked the pattern up again, which was a half double a double crochet into the next two a half double and then a single after I slip stitched into the first stitch and then went ahead and chained 88 After chaining 88, I worked the same pattern again that I did in the beginning for the leaf. After the leaf was complete, I slip stitched into the first stitch, chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. And then it was done! I tied it to the bottom of the strap for extra detail. Using Chenda DIY's tutorial on strawberry appliques, I made 9 strawberries and then sewed them onto the front of the bag. Then the bag was complete! The last project I have in this challenge is my tote bag! This came out so cute. I redid the little leaf bows on the side. I just felt like the green I used was just, it was blending in too much with the green that I used for the ruffles. So I just chose a random green scrap yarn in my closet and just did it like with the darker one. And it stands out so much better. And I also made another one for both of the sides. The back is completely empty just because like I tested it out and holding it, it was kind of bulky, like having it like hit your side. So I thought the back just being plain is perfect. I was originally gonna do a bag like this, but then I was like, let me start with the backup bag first. And then this ended up being my main bag. And then I was like, I don't see the point in making this one anymore. 
if this one turned out really cute. Yeah, this bag is so cute. I wanna line it and then add a little clasp so that it can stay closed. But I'm probably gonna do that a little bit later. And yeah, I really love how this turned out. I'm gonna show you how it looks with my outfit. This is what it looks like when I'm just taking a stroll at the farmer's market, putting some fruit in my bag and then checking out. And then I get my blanket, put it down, have my little bag, take my fruit out, a book, and I'm chilling in the summer heat. But I really love how everything turned out. Like, I think this is the first color challenge video where I genuinely like every single thing. I'm really proud of myself. The slippers that I wanted to do, I was kind of sad that I couldn't do them because of the yarn, but I think that was for a reason because this came out really cute. And this was like designed on a whim. Like I knew that I wanted to do a tote bag as a backup in case the slippers didn't work out but that same day i was like okay i need to figure out a pattern quickly and so i was literally just doodling on procreate throwing things together until it stuck and this is what came out of that thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed all the pieces like i do uh let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite and i'll see you in the next one bye before we go, I want to quickly say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to create your very own website. From creating a site that hosts your artistic portfolio to a site that allows you to sell your art or merchandise, Squarespace is the perfect site for you. If you're not sure where to start exactly, Squarespace offers a ton of different templates based on the type of website you're trying to build, whether it be a blog, a portfolio, or your first shop. Even after choosing a template, Squarespace offers many customization tools to develop your site even further. If you want to build a community with those who visit your site, Squarespace offers email campaigns, which can also be customized to your liking and have them sent to your customers regularly with updates and sales you may have going on. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash ecoshun for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video.